Glad you could join me today at the Port Townsend Marine Science Center while we take a look at a wild animal success story and how I brought this sculpture to life. Now we're gonna take a look at how I built this harbor porpoise, which is native to the Puget Sound here in Washington State. So what is a foam carving made out of? Well, foam. Duh. You can order things like a billet of foam, so from a foam factory that is huge, already done, single piece, ready to rock and roll, but that's really expensive. Me, I'm cheap, and I love a challenge. So this is two inch thick blue foam that you would put in for insulation, and it's a four by eight foot sheet. They're about 35 bucks a sheet for one of these and you will glue laminate it together. So first, it's to the bandsaw. I have a giant stack of foam right now, and the spray foam adhesive worked like a charm. It's holding up really nicely. I put a ton of weight on this overnight. Things are looking good. I'm gonna trace a pattern on this and take it to the bandsaw, because this is still within the range of my big old grizzly bandsaw. This kind of foam cuts incredibly easy, so you don't need a bandsaw to do it. You can use a handsaw, you can use a jigsaw, anything you want. So just know that, well, it's really, really pliable. Makes a mess though, big mess, which is cool. That stuff stinks. So if you can avoid using a hot knife or wire cutter, I highly recommend it because Stuff probably knocks a lot of years off your life. I still wore the full respirator, had a vent pushing it straight out the door, but dang, it's gross. After a really smelly evening using the foam cutter, I got it down to a nice shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and start using a rasp and all sorts of other manner of tools to get this thing worked into shape. Hey, that camera can see me. <laughs> well, what are you doing? Hi, I'm helping Daddy. I'm helping Daddy with the porpoise. So this is kind of sharp. So why is this animal a success story? In the 1970s through the 90s, the harbor porpoise population went from plentiful to basically non-existent here in the Puget Sound. The reason they went away, well, nobody really knows. And it's kind of a big mystery until the early 2000s when the population rebounded big time. The harbor porpoise is actually a common sight on the ferries and anywhere else out in the beautiful waters of the Salish Sea, Puget Sound. So I'm slowly working up. I've marked my dorsal fin location. Now I've also marked the kind of ridge that goes down the spine here. So this little ridge, I'm gonna make that more prominent, really hog out this back end to get the tail looking in good shape. A lot of work to go. Now, harbor porpoises range in length from five feet to five and a half feet long when they're fully grown and can get up to about 170 pounds. Now, the males are slightly smaller than the females, and this one is a male, and both sexes can live up to about 24 years, though eight to 12 is about normal. So what do harbor porpoises eat? They typically eat schooling fish like herring or mackerel, and they also eat squid and octopus. Now, these muscly little mammals, they eat a lot of food typically six to 10% of their own body weight each day in fish and other critters. Now, what eats a harbor porpoise? It's right up there. That would be the orca, which is another resident of the Puget Sound. Now for safety, harbor porpoises stay together in groups known as pods. Typically a pod will range from six to 10, but they can have more than 50 traveling at one time. Safety first. Boom, spray foam is applied. As you can see, and you probably didn't see, 
this stuff was a hot mess to put in here. The batteries on my camera died. I was struggling to get the fit just right on some of the support rods that are inside. So the wood dowel, yeah, it, it got ugly, but it got done. So there you go. It's time to place two heavy duty eyelets on this carving. So I have this style of eyelet. It's rated for, I think, 250 pounds each one. And then at the end, it's kind of a floating washer. I'm gonna push these down into a hole here and spray some foam in. So now I guess I'm on to just sanding the entire thing. And then I'm gonna go back and use some fast and final spackle mud to kind of fill out some of the gaps kind of fair things out a little bit and then it's on to the hard coat so I'll, I'll do a patchwork of the spackling and then that will yeah move on to the next step but I want to get some hard coat going so I'm going to start slapping it on here what I'm using for this uh, Roscoe's foam coat is what I'm going to apply to this so let's put it on So next up, it is the eyeballs, and I'm gonna do what I traditionally do, which is make it out of wood and then paint it. Doing the eyelids took a little bit longer than I thought, but it all came together really well and it is solid as a rock. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put on the hard coat for the head part and then flip it over and do it again. <sighs> Actually, it's like six pounds. The hard coating is complete all the way around, so now it is time to, well, sand the crap out of this thing. It's gonna be a mess. So I think that friction can be a bit of a struggle with hard coat because you can sand the hard coat, but of course there's heat build up when you're making friction. And I think that can actually either dissolve the foam underneath or do something weird. So you gotta take it easy, or at least, I mean, move quickly when you're sanding. Everything has been sanded nice and even or as even as possible and now it's time to move on to the spray coat. So these are going to be thinner top coats of watered down hard coat. This is going to make a huge mess so I'm going to go ahead and spray this thing outside. This is this is a part I've actually been dreading. It's seems simple. When you look at the pictures of a hardware porpoise, it doesn't look very complex, but in fact, it's a lot of a lot happening there. So I'm going to jump into this and put down some base coats. So it's taken a lot of work to get to this point and like a week of just trying to get up to where I have some base coats. You saw me put the hand painted layers on there. That looked like garbage. Now you can see a few coats later, I have gray on the side flank area. I have a darker gray along the back and tail. Things are looking good. I'm gonna flip it over and do white for the belly and then it is airbrush time. I am gonna do a little bit more detail work which I'll show you right here. And then it's on to the belly and then airbrushing. Now I've got down to the nitty gritty, it's time to get this thing done. Up next, I'm gonna take these pieces of steel and make a nice little saddle that looks really fancy for the Marine Science Center. What 
my garbage welds complete, it's now time to test fit. Thank you for following along with this build and if you're ever visiting the beautiful seaside town of Port Townsend, be sure to stop by the Port Townsend Marine Science Center to learn all about the amazing ecosystems right here in the Puget Sound.